Hello Internet! Welcome to another Indigenous Pulse. If you're an artist or creative type, God gave you those passions and those talents for a reason, but it can be difficult to know what to do with that. That's why we're spending the next two episodes talking with artists about how they use their creativity for God. Today we're meeting with a talented filmmaker about how he follows God and how you can do the same. Thanks for joining us. Um, I'm here with James Spradlin. James is a film director, producer, he's a photographer, probably so many other things. He's also co-creator of Alter Creative. Uh, so I'm really excited that you're here uh, joining us. Thanks for speaking with Indigenous. Yeah, I appreciate you having me uh, on today and to be able to have this conversation with you. And so I'm just excited to, to see what we talk about. Yeah. So, thank so you. I know I know one of your loves is filmmaking. So first, I just want to know, like, what do you love about film as an art form? So I'll give a little context later as far as how I got into it. But because I didn't like choose the path of filmmaking a long time ago, like it kind of happened backwards, which I can share a little bit more about that later. Um, I'm not the typical filmmaker in the sense of where like when I watch movies and films, like I don't sit there and analyze it, you know, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not critiquing it and saying like, oh, well, they should have done this and that. Like, I just watch it for what it is. And, you know, if it's impactful, it's impactful. And if it's not, it's not. But um, generally speaking, like the thing that I love about film, really, if I step back and say, what do I love about storytelling is I love how uh, other than firsthand experience, how powerful it can be in impacting how you think, how you feel, and then it can even impact like your actions. It can impact like your life, like it can impact your trajectory of, of, of what you do uh, greatly. And so I think film, you know, the medium of film is, I think one of the most, I think it is the most powerful uh, medium uh, to do that because you can visually show, you know, these things. And then also you can bring in, you know, sounds and music. And so the great thing about storytelling, but also the uh, great thing about filmmaking is that you can take these parts of reality that are below the surface and bring them up to the surface to where we can experience them. And so that practically, what can that look like? Um, I mean, you can take people into the inner mind of someone, the inner feelings of someone in an experience. And, you know, just as a comparison, like if you look at the scriptures, we have amazing insight into like what people are thinking and what people are feeling in these interactions, with, not just with each other, but also like between man and God. And uh, finally, I'd say too, you know, um, part of my case for why is storytelling so important and so powerful is that Christ was a great storyteller. Definitely. You know, if you look, if you, if you look at the parables, I wish I could be that precise in that, in, in telling the story, you know, I just, I can't, you know, I can't even answer this question that precise. And so like, I just love how uh, precise he is in any of the parables that he tells and how powerful they are. And, you know, he used them to, to help people understand truths and help them to understand things that were uh, beyond them. And he used it also as means of like changing them supernaturally, changing them spiritually. And so, yeah, I think storytelling and, and, and then filmmaking, you know, uh, is, is an awesome medium for, for impacting people and, and creating change. Yeah, and you said that um, your route to becoming a filmmaker was not a typical one. So how did you get into it? Yeah, so I got into it by accident. And what I mean by that is, uh, essentially, I was uh, working in healthcare many, many years ago, and this is like 12, 13 years ago. And I was on the executive track uh, at the hospital on the branding and business side, uh, marketing side of things. And I was going on a trip to Tibet. So I actually bought my first DSLR. This is like back in 2009. Uh, I had never had a camera like that. That was like a, a really good photo camera uh, at, at the time. And for you know, the amount of money I had, it was a really good photo camera, a really good video camera. And I'm literally on the plane reading DSLRs for dummies. I'm literally <laughs> reading the, the dummies book. And what I accidentally discovered on that trip is I fell in love with 
like the, the images that I could capture, uh, but even more so, what was amazing to me is that the camera gave me access to people just to like starting a conversation with someone or approaching a stranger uh, and starting to talk with them and to take, be able to take a picture of them and then to continue, continue talking after. And I've always been fascinated by people, especially people that are very different than me. And so like I accidentally discovered that this tool, this, this, this uh, piece of technology actually allowed me to connect with some, another human being in a way that I didn't even know was possible. I also accidentally discovered too that I had somewhat of a basic uh, talent in it. Like, a, you know, we say like you have an eye for it uh, that I didn't, I didn't know I had because I never really considered myself very artistic uh, prior to that because I was doing, you know, more technology development and strategy and business side of stuff. So, um, you know, I come back from that trip and basically uh, I was at the hospital marketing and I start uh, an MBA program because again my plan at that point was to continue moving up the ladder and um, a lot of other stuff happened to where I started to just ask myself do I really want to stay in healthcare the rest of my life but I was like what in the world am I going to do like what, what would I do instead well we had begun pioneering brand storytelling like back in 2010 2011 before it was even a thing and so uh, at that time the company we had hired was my friend and he had his own production company and so coincidentally, when I started, the, the day that I decided, hey, I'll be open to looking for something different is when I, the day that I found out that his business partner was leaving. Wow. And he didn't, he didn't know what to do. Like literally within like 24 hours of me saying, okay, God, I'm open to like doing something different. Like I found that out. And, you know, my friend at the time, like he was like, I don't know what I'm going to do because I can't do this by myself. So I ended up basically leaving the comforts of corporate America and, you know, all my retirement fund and all that kind of stuff. I <laughs> uh, went and joined the entrepreneurial journey. And what ended up happening is I joined him to be the business guy. You know, I had no intention of being a filmmaker or, you know, even operating a camera doing that stuff. But as time went on, uh, I started helping with filming and was actually, you know, good enough to, to help with it. And then I started helping with story writing and story concepting. And then I, I realized that there was a side of me that I basically like was untapped. And that honestly, like I was suppressing a lot because I was like, no, I'm supposed to be the business guy. No, I spent all this money on an on a, on a MBA. Like I, I need to be up here, like not be down here. And so as God would have it over time, basically I just kind of climbed the ladder down into where I was meant to be. That's an amazing journey that God put you on and how he showed up at the exact moment that both you and your friend needed him to. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of forgot about that that happened that way until I told you that. <laughs> so, I mean, it was literally the, like within 24 hours, you know, and I took that, I took that like very seriously, you know, that this, this can't be a coincidence. Yeah. It's amazing. And then on one of your shoots, you had an encounter with Jesus that, that really changed your life. So can you tell us about that? You know, it's kind of like these little steps in faith and trusting God and, and following his, his guidance. You know, when you step back and you look at them, you can clearly see this path. Right. But when you're in it, you don't really, you can't see it for, for what it is, right? And so uh, back in the fall of 2018, uh, I had taken, um, I'd taken a fairly risky project, just like logistically, taking a fairly risky project. And so basically it was, uh, I went to North Georgia uh, wilderness uh, to film a little project for uh, a faith-based drug rehab program. So I went up into the woods on this like retreat with about 50 guys uh, that were in the program. Uh, almost all of them were, you know, ex-drug addicts or ex-alcoholics. Most of them were criminals, that kind of thing. Yeah. And um, I was there to kind of like capture uh, this, to create a story of like this transformation that happens like when they're in the program. Um, going into that project, like I didn't have any idea that God was going to use it to change me. I didn't have any idea that God was going to use it to change my trajectory. 
Mm-hmm. So what happened is one night um, I was finished filming and, and one night, like uh, we gather around the big campfire. So if you just picture like, you know, 50, 60, 70 guys in concentric circles around this big campfire and the guy leading it, you know, uh, taught like a little sermon through scripture. And then it moved into like a, a large prayer session and like some guys like uh, just started talking about how they needed healing for like some past severe trauma in their life that was connected to their addiction. So I'm just standing by the fire as this whole, all this is going on. And I'm just like listening, you know, I'm praying, you know, in in my head as well too, for these guys. And there's like awesome things that are happening to, to these people. And I hear basically, I mean, this is what I heard is that, uh, God spoke to me in that like very strange audible but not audible whisper and basically said like this is what i want you to do i want you to enter into the front lines of my work i want you to enter into the front lines of spiritual warfare i want you to suffer with other people i want you to see my power and i want you to capture it so you can take it back and you can share it with other people so that they may know me and like all that just like I, I get emotional, <laughs> excuse me, I get emotional and just like, I've told that story many times, but like it still hits me because it was just like, you don't understand like how powerful that was. Leading up to that, I was addicted to vision. I was addicted to uh, getting value out of my work and feeling uh, like like finding my ultimate calling so that I could like feel like I was worth something. And God had revealed to me that that was an idol, that that was an addiction, like, you know, leading up to that, that experience. And so I fully given, I repented of that and I gave it over to him. And so for him to give me that calling, for him to give me that vision back was, was crazy because it was like, I didn't even, I, I had been like, Lord, I'll do whatever you want me to do. But then he gave me back something that was, was almost like a purified desire, right? And he gave me a, a, a very clear focus. Even the next day, when a bunch of the guys uh, in the in the program were getting baptized in the cold river up, up there, um, I had asked to get rebaptized uh, in, in order just to you know ritualistically like signify like a turning point for my for myself, and to do that in a in a group of people, um, you know, a group of other believers of. Uh, and they didn't really, none of them really even knew that like God had, had engaged me in the way he had that night before. And so that was really a way that I could like kind of put a, uh, an altar, so to speak of like, this is a change in my life going forward. Yeah. It's amazing to be given such a clear calling from God. Um, so then, you know, after, after that happened, then what did you do? What did you change to make your work follow that calling? I can be very stubborn. And even though a lot of people think that, a lot of my friends I'll say think that I'm brave and uh, I'm willing to take risks that most other people don't. What they don't know is that there's often an internal battle that happens. And, you know, to where like, I'm like, okay, Lord, I'll trust you, but not with this part. You know, like I'll keep this part to myself. And, you know, you you do that enough times and it doesn't work. Like it, it just doesn't work. Right. And so, um, basically, uh, timing wise, and, and I didn't have control over the timing of this at all, but like after that guy filmed that weekend, I officially got my first project with crew. And so okay. it was like, I had, I had, you know, given God my yes to my willingness to, to telling stories of him, but then he also brought to me the opportunities to do it. And so I was able to instantly like step into that calling uh, without, you know, having to wait five years or 10 years or 40 years, like some people, you know, did, you know, back in the scriptures. But yeah, in 2020, I knew that like the, the current media company I had, the creative company I had, the model was not set up to embrace that vision that God gave me because I started it, I started that new company I split off from the other guy and started that new company yeah. before I had the clarity from God. 
And so once God gave me that clarity, I kept trying to shove that vision into this previous model and this previous right. media brand I had. And it just, it didn't fit. It didn't fit. And so in 2020, I was like, okay, God, tell me what it is. Like, just like, give me, like, give me the name, give me like, like the, the, the ethos, the vibe, like what's it supposed to be. And I knew that once I heard the name, like once, you know, that I had the name, everything else would make sense. So again, I know, I know you believe this and people watching this believe in this kind of stuff, but it does sound kind of crazy. And so uh, last June, you know, I mean, I've been pressing in, pressing in and praying and journaling and brainstorming of like, like, what do you want this to be? Like, what, what do you really want it to form around? Like you, you gave me kind of the pragmatic part. And while I was, you know, here at my uh, house praying, um, the word altar popped into my mind. And again, uh, when you, when God gives you things, you, you, you get very used to like, kind of like the spiritual smell of it. And you know, yeah. it's of him and it's not of you. So the word altar pops in my mind, but it didn't, it wasn't spelled like you're supposed to spell it. It wasn't spelled just A-L-T-A-R. And it wasn't spelled alter, like to change A-L-T-E-R. And how it was spelled in my mind was A-L-T-A-E-R. But like, so what, what does alter mean? And it's like, as soon as that, as soon as that was in my mind, I knew exactly what it meant. And it embodied exactly what he wanted me to do and how he wanted me to go forward. And that is to bring uh, myself, to bring my body, my mind, my heart, my time, my energy, my skills, my talents as a living sacrifice, like the scriptures say, as a living sacrifice to him, to give it to him as an act of worship. And so that's altar, A-L-T-A-E-R, or A-L-T-A-R. And then so that he will use those things to create change, create transformation. And in my experience of obeying him in these projects and, and, and doing these things, yes, it's absolutely to help create change in other people, but I've been the beneficiary so many times. Like my life has been changed. My faith has been so much deepened. My vision of God has been greatly expanded through, through all this. And so that again, allows me to have that. And so in the middle of a global pandemic, uh, as of January 1st, 2021, I legally started uh, Alter Creative and you know, basically started shifting all my projects like into this, this new focus, this new vision. And that's all I'm doing. And so, you know, I think one of the things that you know I talked about previous to all this was like, you know, well, how does that play out? I mean, like how it plays out is, I mean, like one of the day after I I I uh, very shortly after, not the day after, very shortly after I filed for the legal thing to happen, like you have to go to form an LLC. I got a call from a New York agency to ask me to do non-faith-based work uh, for my previous company. Hmm. And I took that as a test in a sense or an opportunity you could say of, am I going to trust God or not, right? Because how I always justified in the past was, no, like I'll do the, the, the work that, you know, makes a lot of money and then I'll do like the God work over here. but you know, you can't serve two masters for a reason. And not to say that some people can't make both of that work, but he explicitly called me to focus on this. But it's great that you have that specific focus and, and you want to make stuff that, that does alter people, that changes people. So do you have an example of, of something you've done where you've seen that? Yeah. Yeah. And so the going back to kind of storytelling, one thing I love about it is that it can affect people so differently. Um, you know, so if, even if you go back to like the parables of Christ, like, so the people he was sharing those parables with at the time, it affected people differently who were listening. Yeah. And then as those stories have been retold for 2000 years since, like those parables affect people differently, Sim similarly, you know, in some sense in the same ways, but very different. And a lot of that's timing. A lot of that's like what's going on in life. And so just to use one example um, of a story that I finished, you know, I don't know, or earlier this year uh, called Fausto. Uh, that was another one I did for, for career and leader impact. And uh, 
one of the kind of the reactions that I heard from it, uh, because the part of one of the themes of the story is uh, God forgives us so that we can be free. Yeah, so one of the reactions I heard from that one was, I've never considered that forgiveness is freedom. And then, and then he says, I'm not sure I've ever even felt free. So maybe I don't recognize that God has forgiven me. You know, and like that is powerful. It's sad. I mean, this is coming from someone who's been a Christian like pretty much their whole life. Uh, and this person, like, you know, because I know the context of their story has been struggling. And so uh, and I, I've seen how this person struggled to feel free. And so, like, again, creating that story, like, it wasn't my intention for it to be received that way. And, you know, that's, I've seen, I've seen that, what that person wrote, I've seen that continue to play out of, like, what does it look like for them to receive the forgiveness and the freedom that comes with it of God, you know, because it's one thing to know it. It's another thing to believe it. It's another thing for it to actually like change, change you. Uh, so I'm wondering for anyone who, who's watching this, if they're, you know, whether they're a filmmaker or a writer or a photographer or just any, just any creative uh, person out there who follows Jesus, do you have any advice for them on how to use those gifts? The best advice I can give is to encourage each person to go to God directly and, and say, Lord, like I'm willing to, to use this, like for your glory, I'm willing to use this so that people know you, I'm willing to use this uh, out of love for you, the two greatest commandments, love, love God, mm -hmm. right? For the whole being and then love others. I'm, I'm, I'm willing and I desire to. And honestly, even if, you don't completely desire to do that even as a Christian. Like, like I know that we're complex human beings. You can even ask for the desire to, to desire that, you right. know, if that's where you're at. But at, like, go, to, go to him on that and say, how do you want me to do this, right? Like, give me the opportunities, bring them to me. And those opportunities might already be right in front of your face, right? And then I would encourage people to like, because uh, in my experience, Every story I've done, every single one I've done uh, with that intention has taken a significant amount of risk. And there's, there's a significant amount of, of things that could go wrong or, or not work out. And so it's also that too, it's just ask him for um, what you need to do it, ask him for the courage to do it, you know, and the, and the faith to do it. And, you know, a lot of times, like, like, that's where you'll see amazing things happen. Like you start out with, you know, a few fish and a few loaves and you see like what he creates, what he creates out of it. So that's, that's the best advice I can give uh, is to like, go to God directly and, and ask him for that. And, you know, and just see what happens. I mean, what do you have, what do you have to lose at that point? Um, practically speaking. I would uh, say, after you do that, think about what you're passionate about in regards to solving suffering and problems that people have. And so this is something that I've seen a lot of filmmakers, a lot of creative types like really struggle with. They're like, they don't know how to connect their gifts to like building the kingdom or helping, or even just like helping people, like even on a practical level. And so my advice is start with like, what are you passionate about? What do you care about most? So is it, is it orphan children being adopted? Is it, you know, people uh, being malnutrition, you know, uh, suffering from malnutrition? Is it people not knowing the name of Jesus Christ? You know, not having an opportunity to, to hear uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ? Uh, is it um, uh, human trafficking? like whatever, but start with the passion for those problems because God's passionate about all those things, but he's given each of us a specific drawing towards because I mean, we can't individually, we can't tackle them all. It's impossible, right? You know, it's overwhelming when you start thinking about it. And so, uh, and even ask him for like, what, what is it that you want me to focus on? 
Because when you focus on people suffering, when you focus on a problem, then you can reverse engineer from, from there and say, how can I impact how people think, how people feel, and then potentially like even how they live, how they act, and how can I use uh, my gifts that I have? And so if you're a writer, like how do you, uh, let's say like, let's pick one like orphan children, you know, who, who need families and need to be adopted. Well, there's tons of organizations out there who are already doing that, who are already tackling that. And so that's where as a writer, you can say, okay, how can I help tell stories uh, of, of this need and, can, and help create change and impact through that? So start with the problem and then reverse engineer from, from that. And I, I believe that like God will guide each person and give you probably more opportunity than you, know, you could even handle if you're open to it.